Hello and welcome to day five of our mindfulness challenge. Um, today's another different day in our life here in the house. Um, I honestly think that my wife has contracted uh, the coronavirus. Um, she's in bed. She's got a, a, a really high temperature and she's quite lifeless. Um, but we're giving her tablets. She suffers from asthma, so we're going to have to watch how we go with her breathing and um, if it deteriorates over today we're gonna um, call the hospital and uh, and and see where we are but um, we have to we have to keep going on we have to keep fighting we have to keep um, being in the right frame of mind and I know how much um, and people have said how much they're enjoying uh, these videos but also there's a lot of important messages especially around this time you know last night at, at 8 30 our Prime Minister Boris Johnson um, stated that we are now in complete lockdown. You cannot go out unless it's for, you know, essential things. So, you know, there are testing times. And with all of these testing times, you know, we have a lot of thoughts and we've spoke a lot about thoughts yesterday. But what about emotions? What about these emotions that come to us um, and and they conjure up things like, you know, anxiety and depression and fear and all of these things? And what I want to talk about now is... We've been doing loving kindness all week. Today we're going to do a body scan that I've recorded previously, which we'll use. Um, in, it's from one of my mindfulness meditation courses on Udemy. And we'll put that in today. But I want you to think about a couple of things. I want you to think about self-kindness versus self-judgment. What does that mean? Well, it's very easy for us to beat ourselves up over every little thing that goes wrong. So, you know... If we if we if, if something goes wrong or or whatever, we blame ourselves. We say, "Oh, look, why does it always happen to me? Why? What is all this about?" You know, and 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 we have to we have to treat ourselves with care. We have to treat ourselves with understanding. We have a desire to heal ourselves, to comfort ourselves, and be with ourselves, to soothe ourselves, and give ourselves, if we need, you know, a hug at times when we need it most, to ensure that we are allowing self kindness to cultivate over self-judgment. So, you know, we, we, we're far too quick to judge ourselves. We're far too quick to, to have to try and ascertain, um, on times, unrealistic levels of our life based on, you know, um, and what we're told us around us. You know, a lot of our lives are, are manufactured um, from or indoctrinated, can never say that word, um, uh, by what we're taught. And we're told... You get, you know, you're born, you, you, you go to school, you, you meet someone, you get married, you have children, you know, you then, you know, you got a job, you buy a house, you, you get old and you die and then, you, you know, and on, on it goes. Well, that's fine and that's life. But, you know, we have choices and we have choices how we're going to live that life. And free will for me is one of the greatest things. But when we think about self-kindness and self-judgment, self stop trying to really strive for things that you don't need or put yourself under amount, immense amounts of pressure that then you beat yourself up about. You create these in, emotions about, you know, you're not good enough and, and you're a waste of space and you're a burden and all of these things. When really, if you sit with yourself and have self-kindness, it, it really does help to treat yourself with care. Then there's what I talk about is, is normality, human, humanality. Normality, humanality, where did that come from? It just came. Versus, you know, isolating ourselves. And what does that mean? Well, we need to reframe a lot of our experiences and put them into the context of the world that we live in and the life that we are leading. Sometimes um, we'll put ourselves in isolation because... You know, we think, oh, everything I do is wrong. I'm just not going to bother. I, I can't be asked. I'm going to, you know, well, this is rubbish. I, it's always me. It's my fault. Blah, blah, blah. And we put ourselves in isolation. We're all in isolation at the moment for, for different reasons. But this self-isolation is there because we don't think we're good enough. We don't think we can do it. We think it's it's always happening to us and my life is poxed. And I, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. And, you know, what am I going to do? And, and, and we have to remember that... Most of the things in our lives, good or bad or very bad, have been felt and suffered by a large proportion of people all over the world. We do not suffer in isolation, albeit 
we penalize ourselves and put ourselves in isolation. Something goes wrong, it's not abnormal. If something bad happens, it's not abnormal. It happens all over the world. And know that life will have its ups and downs. It's going to go wrong. We have to think about how we, um, how we isolate ourselves on times and, and realise that, you know, if we do that, it's really going to have a negative effect on us. What we really want to be able to do and really start to get um, and live a life where we can, you know, we can really build resistance to things is we turn to face the issue. We turn to face the problem. We don't immediately go into problem-solving mode. We can just sit with it. Stop. Stop wherever you... If you've got a problem or issue, think about it, bring it into your thoughts, stop, and just sit with it and witness it. You might be sat there for an hour, half an hour. No judgmental thoughts, no problem-solving. Just sit with it. And understand that we all have issues. We all have problems. I started this... um, video today talking about my wife's illness but I'm not in isolation with that this is happening all over the world this is unfortunately um, becoming a normality so we have to think about how we have common humanity we all have and we all experience these feelings we all have painful things happen in our lives we have to be aware of our suffering we have to notice our suffering to be able to offer it compassion and mindfulness and mindfulness allows us to be with that suffering where we can turn towards it and be with it we can notice it we can breathe with it and we can know that it will pass and that what is happening to us happens to people all over the world again if we start self-judging ourselves it's that niggling pain that really hurts us it never goes away we get lost in the role of being Um, the self-critic we forget how much we're hurting and we just keep beating ourselves up we need to turn towards the pain the suffering the anxiety notice it breathe it and let it pass and as i said we go into problem solving or fight or flight when issues start and that really it can help solve some of the problems but it doesn't help save solve any of the emotions and when we're in emotional pain, we want to fix it straight away. And, it, and it's when it comes to emotions and problem solving that, that we really want to sit back and wait for the best response. There's a lot of wisdom in our problems. There's a lot of, there's a lot of learning in our traumas. And let's not throw that away. So let's sit with the problem. Let's sit with the emotion. Let's sit with the traumas and understand exactly what happened. Take the learning lessons from it and understand that it's going to pass and understand that lots of people have these issues. And it's how we deal with this inner world that drives everything. And the conventional views of emotions are very rigid. If this happens, you feel this way. And we need to be more open with how our emotions affect us. We need to sit with them. We need to be with them. And what I'd like you to do, um, and you don't have to do it right now. You can put me on pause if you want. Okay. Um, go and get a book and pen. And, and get open a page. And I want you to write on a blank piece of paper what you're feeling right now. Write it down and write it as if nobody's reading it or if nobody's going to read it. And then sit with it. And we need to understand that our lives are fragile and in this moment they have never been so fragile since, you know, well, I don't know, maybe the wars, whatever. But we need to understand that our lives are fragile. We want to move away from these rigid responses and move towards a loving kindness, a compassion and a love for ourselves. If we can move away from seeing emotions of being good and bad and 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 you know and actually look to see where the positives are in them and we're always told be positive you know and and that's a that's a standard response but if we can sit with it understand it and just be with it it's amazing what we can achieve we know that if emotions are pushed to one side that they grow we know we talk about our awareness and when we push our awareness and we awaken then we bring these uh, emotions back into play and and Let's face those emotions today, sit with them, be with them, knowing that you're not alone and these emotions are normal as our life unfolds. The more we try to stop thinking emotions, the more they grow. And I was told a story once, and it's great really, it's like the chocolate cake in the fridge when you're on a diet. Um, The more you think about it, the more chance 
You're going to go in the fridge and get it. Um, and before you know, you sat down with a cup of coffee and a piece of cake. So when you think about where you are today, especially um, in this enforced isolation, sharing the love, the knowledge that you're not alone. You're not a bad person for feeling emotions, but please realize this is normal. Open your heart and let the emotions flow and let your emotions out and accept them in the knowledge that you're not alone and life can be good or it can be bad. One of the things I talked about, which always gets, you know, comments is we are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are real, but they're not true. In the same context, we own our emotions. They don't own us. We can generate the best pathway to our best life, a life where we're truly compassionate, kind and loving to ourselves and to others. Be love and give love. Again, we are not our emotions. We own our emotions. They don't own us. Sit with them, turn to them, acknowledge them and let them go. Emotional agility is what we talk about, allows us to take the values from the emotions, but not to allow them to affect our lives. And what we're feeling is normal. And just finally, before I go, think about, there's a thing called secondary response. And when something happens, it conjures up the emotion. And the secondary response really is the point where it's not great. So think of it this way. The problem is generally not the problem. It's our relationship and response to the problem. So for argument's sake, if I was working in, in the kitchen in my bar and um, and I burnt a piece of food, and I go, oh, it always happens to me, bloody hell, and I bang the stove, and the, and the chip pan falls off, and fat goes all over the floor, and the dishwasher walks down, and she slips on the fat and burns herself, and, and I'm, oh, see, I told you, it's always me, why is it always me? I can't bloody do anything, blah, 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 blah. And I've caused a catastrophe. Or I could turn around and say, I burnt that, just do another one. The problem is the same, the response is different. And the long-term response is different too. So just think about it. And again, I want to remind you of a saying that I'm using quite a bit at the moment when we talk about um, you know, how bad we all are and the situations we're all in. And somebody once said to me, don't pray for a man who has no shoes. Pray for a man who has no feet. I'll leave that with you. And just remember one thing. We own our emotions they don't own us and we are not our emotions i'm going to put the mindful video the body scan video on the body scan video really is great because you're going to lay down you're going to sit with your emotions and you're going to see what rises we're going to connect with every part of our body parts of our body that we've never connected with before where we might have pushed some repressed emotions but now we know how to deal with these emotions we know how to accept them we know how to acknowledge them we know how to work on with them i hope you enjoy it here's the body scan and i'll see you in a minute Now the body scan is very much, we're going to go right the way through the body, we're going to open it all up, and we're going to see what emotions come out. Okay, and then, you know, you can send me comments or whatever it is, if you want to tell me what happened to you or whatever the scenario is. So again, what I want you to do is get into this, you know, very comfortable position, all right, I want you to be comfortable and not too relaxed. Uh, this meditation, all meditations are about falling awake, not falling asleep. Okay, so it's comfortable rather than relaxed. All right, so get into that comfortable position. All right, I want you to close your eyes. Okay, I want you to close your eyes <clears throat> and I want you just to follow my breath. Follow my voice, sorry. Okay, just follow my voice. Again, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to be aware of your breath. So the mindfulness meditation that we've done just a few moments ago, I want you to do it again. So sit in the posture. Breathe and feel the point of your breath and then just breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And as I've said before, if you have any thoughts that come into your mind, acknowledge them, breathe them in, acknowledge them, hold them, accept them, and then breathe them out. Breathe them away. Okay? So you're sat now and you're going to focus on your breath. Breathing in and breathing out at that point of contact where your breath, you feel it. It's on your shirt or whatever it is. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. 
Now, what I want you to do is I want you to find your own natural rhythm, okay, your own natural breathing rhythm. All right. And I want you to be now comfortable and warm, and you can sit in this position, but your eyes now have closed gently. And I want you to take a few moments, again, just to get in touch with the movement of your breath and the sensations in your body. Just sit and follow my breath, follow my voice. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. Now, as I said, you may be feeling some sensations in your body. When you're ready, bring your awareness to the physical sensations in your body, especially the sensations of touch or pressure. If you like, where your body makes contact with the chair or the bed, wherever you are. On each out breath, I want you to let yourself go. So you can feel when you're sat in the chair or you're laying on the bed, you feel those points of contact. You're breathing in. You're breathing out. On every out breath, as I said, I want yourself to go. I want you to sink a little deeper into the chair. I want you to sink a little deeper into the bed if you are. Remind yourself of the intention of this practice. The intention is to let all of your stress, your emotions, your fears to go. It's a name not to feel any different, relaxed or calm. This may happen or it may not. But instead, the intention of this practice, as best you can, is to bring the awareness to any sensations you detect as we focus on each part of the body. Now bring your attentions to the physical sensations in the lower abdomen. Becoming aware of any changing patterns or sensations in the abdomen, in your stomach wall, and as you breathe in, and as you breathe out. Take a few moments to feel the sensations as you breathe in and you breathe out. Having connected with the sensations in your stomach and the abdomen, bring your focus or spotlight of your awareness down the left leg. So slowly your focus and awareness is going through the top of your thigh, through your knee, through your calf, into the left foot and out of your toes on the left foot. I want you to focus now on your breath on each one of these toes in the left foot in turn. Bring in a gentle curiosity to investigate the quality of the sensations you find. Perhaps noticing the sense of contact between the toes, a sense of tingling, warmth or no particular sensation. When you're ready, on an in-breath, feel or imagine the breath entering the lungs, passing down the abdomen, into the left leg, left foot, and out to the toes of the left feet. Then, on the out-breath, feel or imagine the breath coming all the way back up, out to the foot, into the leg, up through the abdomen, in through the chest, and out through the nose. As best you can, Continue this for a few breaths. Breathing down into the toes and back out of the toes. It may be difficult to get the hang of this practice. This is just breathing into things as best you can. Approaching it in a right way. Now when you're ready and out breath, let go of the awareness of the toes and bring your awareness to the sensations on the bottom of your left foot. Bring in a gentle, investigative awareness to the sole of the foot, the instep, the heel. And notice in the sensations where the heel makes contact with the floor or the bed. Experiment with breathing with the sensations. Being aware of the breath in the background as in the foreground you explore the sensations of your lower foot. 
Breathing in and breathing out. Now allow the awareness to expand into the rest of the foot, to the ankle, to the top of the foot, and right into the bones and joints. Then taking a slightly deeper breath, directing it down into the whole of the left foot. And as the breath lets go out on the out breath, let go of the left foot completely. Allowing the focus of awareness to move into the lower left leg, the calf, the shin, the knee, and so on in turn. Continue to bring awareness and a gentle curiosity to the physical sensations in each part of the rest of the body in turn. To the upper left leg, to the right toes, to the right foot, to the right leg, to the pelvic area. Into the back. Breathe in through the abdomen. Make a point of contact to your chest and your fingers, your hands and your arms. Your shoulders, your neck, your head and your face. And in each area, as best you can, bring the same detailed level of awareness and gentle curiosity to the bodily sensations they present. Breathe in and breathe out. Through your fingers, through your hands, through your arms, through your shoulders. And when you become aware of any tension or other intense sensations in particular part of the body, you can breathe in. Acknowledge that emotion in turn, hold it, breathe out and let it go. Using the, using the in-breath gently to bring awareness into these sensations and as best you can have a sense of letting them go or releasing them on the out-breath. So as you work yourself all over your body, if you feel any emotions, any feelings, breathe them in, accept them and breathe them out. Your mind will inevitably wander away from the breath and from the body from time to time. That is entirely normal. It's what your minds do. When you notice it, generally acknowledge it, Noticing where the mind has gone off to, and then gently return your attention to the part of the body you intend to focus on. You breathe in, and you breathe out. So take that time now to go through all parts of your body. On your right leg. Right thigh, right knee, right down through the calf, through the foot, through the sole, and through the feet, through the toes. And now you're connected with your right leg. I just want you to breathe in and see if any sensations or emotions or anything comes to the surface. If it does, we're going to breathe it in, we're going to acknowledge it, and we're going to breathe it out. We're going to let it go. And as we let it go, we let go of all of our energy that we don't need, any negative stress, anything in those parts of the body we're going to let go. And you need to scan the whole of your body. And after you scan the whole body in this way, spend a few moments being aware of the sensation of the body as a whole and of the breath freely flowing in and out of the body. If you find yourself becoming too relaxed and falling asleep, you might find it helpful just to prop your head up with a pillow. You may also want to do it with opening your eyes, practice sitting up rather than laying down. And you could adjust the time spent in this practice by using larger chunks of your body to become aware of spending a shorter, longer time with each part. The body scan is about you going through each part of your body, breathing in, finding any emotions, anything, and breathing out. Breathe it in and breathe it out.
Okay, so that's um, that's a practice that we use the body scan. Isn't it? Okay, um, I'm sure you enjoyed that. It's a little bit deep and it's a little bit can be a bit emotional. And when I've done it with lots of people, they say, "Oh, I never realised I stored that emotion in my my right foot, and I didn't realise I had so much anger inside me. I didn't realise. I didn't realise. I didn't realise." And that's fine. You know, by working and doing these things and cultivating our mindfulness techniques and using some absolute profound, wonderful things that have been gifted to us by some of the most greatest minds in the world, um, we can truly start to live that, you know, helping yourself live that happy, balanced, healthy uh, spiritual life with clarity and purpose. God bless you. Stay safe. Um, and don't forget, when you woke up this morning, good morning, Julian. I love you. Good morning, Julian. I love you. Be love and give love. God bless. Please leave your comments under underneath if you've got anything to say. Please share the video. And of course, if you'd like, subscribe to the channel. We will be on day six tomorrow. God bless. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.